Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I'm going to show you a really cool star trail effect. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramelli. I am a French photographer from the beautiful city of Paris, living in Los Angeles, California. And I make two tutorials per week, or at least I try to, every Tuesday and every Friday. All right, this one is going to be about star trails. I found a really cool free software that works to make really easy this effect, the star trail effect. This is something I've been wanting to do. There's a few tricks about the shooting and let me show you how I did this. All right, mesdames et messieurs, so in this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to do this effect, the star trail effect. Now, to get the star trail effect, you need to be shooting at the North Star, l'étoile du Nord, as we say in French. You see, that's this star in the middle because all the stars basically turn around them. I asked my friend, Emeric Lebar, who is actually a French photographer living also in Los Angeles, who specializes in time-lapse. He has a, a series of time-lapse on Los Angeles, New York, uh, Grand Canyon, which is just amazing. It's so good that I actually decided to do a time-lapse masterclass with him that should be ready in one month or two months. So we're doing a lot of time-lapse together. And basically, if you want to be able to do the star straight effect, you need to do like a time lapse, meaning you need to take a photo every 10 or 15 seconds, but you need to do it straight at, uh, at the North Star. By the way, if you are looking for great time lapse you want to buy for not a lot of money, you can go to emericlebar.com. He has a shop coming soon where you can buy all his time lapse. For now, you can send him an email, but you can check out all his licensing. It's amazing. The quantity, look at this beautiful time lapse he did, you know, with movement and. Uh, he's got some of the most amazing time lapse I have seen. You really got to check him out. And he also has a YouTube channel, uh, which is Emmerich's Time Lapse. You can subscribe. He does French and English tutorials on doing time lapse, which are for free. So you got to check it out. So basically, I did not have a, a photo shoot of photos in front of the North Star. So he provided me with some. Thanks you so much, Emmerich, for that. And so. Basically what he did, he was he shot this with a Canon 6D, so let's look at his setting. He was at ISO 2500, 25 seconds with a Canon 6D. Uh, I think he was shooting with a very uh, uh, wide lens. Do we have the lens information? No, we don't. Uh, so it must, must not be a Canon lens. So I think he had like a 12 millimeter, but it's, uh, yeah, a 12 millimeter or something like this, a very wide, like the Royal Canon lens or... I don't know exactly what lens, but very wide because you want to get the stars. And he got some really good files, you know. Um, so he was basically taking a photo like almost every 25 seconds. And uh, I did many tests, but usually when you shoot at night, uh, you're on a tripod. Um, personally, with a Sony, I go down to about 15 seconds and, and I go to 4000 ISO. That's usually my settings. Because um, 4000 ISO on a Sony A7R2 is uh, a good quality. On a, on a Canon camera, this is a 6D, it's, it's now becoming a bit of an old camera. It's good to not go over 2500. So you can do some tests, you know. You start off with 25 seconds at 2500. You know, the problem is that if you go too long, if you go over 30 seconds, the, the star are going to start, and you can see it a little bit, they're going to start to to have a little trail. You see there's a little trail here on this star. But 20, you, you see it like of, of above 30 seconds. In this case, we don't care because when we're not trying to do a time lapse. We're trying to do, you know, a, a star trail effect. So he basically put his camera on a tripod, took a photo every 25 seconds. You know, you want to go for the lowest possible. So if you've got like a good wide angle lens that opens at 2.8, you open it at 2.8. Oh, one trick he showed me also, which is really cool, is when you do your focus, try to zoom in on the stars. You can now zoom in often on many cameras. And you, because you don't want to just focus off inf infinity, that can give you blurry stars. So what you do is you focus until you see the stars becoming the smallest possible. And you will see that they are, are going to be very, very uh, detailed. This is when you focus. It's somewhere around the infinity. Okay, that's how you do it. Uh, of course, as usual, he was shooting raw. Uh, you know, you fix your white balance. So you have, you, you have it and you uh, you fist your focus you don't autofocus you you know you do the focus like i told you and you take a photo every 25 seconds straight at the north pole now how do you find the north pole well the north pole uh, you can use app like this one for example i'm going to give you all the links uh, in the tutorial uh, of this video so you'll have the links to emric time lapse to his youtube channel but also to this app called that's what he uses 
he, uh, Skyview Free. It's a free app for the iPhone. I believe it is it's for Android also, where you can look at the sky and you can locate the North Star. So then what you have to do, what you want to do, is have the North Star in the middle of your composition if you really want to get the full circle like I'm going to show you. Okay, so also one thing I wanted to tell you, a little advertisement for my stuff. If you go to my website, photosearch.com, uh, you can still get... 15% off on the Adobe Creative Clouds or 20% on the Adobe Creative Photography Plan. All you have to do is go to my gear page and click on that. So if, you're, if you don't have Lightroom or Photoshop, you never went into the Creative Cloud game, I really advise you to do so. I mean, for $7.99, and normally it's $10.99, but for $7.99, you can get Photoshop and Lightroom. That's like t not even two coffees at Starbucks. Also, one thing I've been using a lot these days is Plotograph animated photos. If you go, it's right below my Adobe ad. If you go on it, I'll show you a whole bunch of animated photos. I'm having such a ball with this. It's a bit of a pricey software, uh, and you can actually get 10% on it from me, but it does an amazing, easy, it's so easy to use. You can do this in Photoshop or After Effects, but believe me, not as easy as that. And I have a lot of friends who does real estate, wedding photography, you know, and actually can sell these photos to their clients. I would not advise to buy it if you cannot make money with it, but if you can make money with it, do buy it, unless you're a very wealthy person and you can you know, play around with it. It's such a cool software and easy to use. Here's a link of a video where I show you how to use it. All right, let's continue our tutorial. So back to Emric Photos, what I do, uh, the retouching that you need to do, and I've tried many different types of retouching, is something like this. This, this is what we're gonna go for as a final result. You want something very dark, uh, very contrasty where um, you know, everything is kind of black but the stars because this, if you go too bright when you're going to blend the stars later on it's going to look really, really bad so it's very easy uh, I'm going to start off as I usually do I open the shadows I bring down the highlights I'm going to do my black point I'm going to and I'm going to do my white point I want a lot of contrast and boom okay, I'm going to add some magenta because I think it's a bit too green and I want something like this, maybe boost a little bit the exposure, but not that much, something like this. Let me see if it's something similar to what I did earlier. Yeah, it's pretty similar, pretty similar. I expect that I, I think I warmed up the sky just a little bit more. Okay, so you want something very contrasty. That's what you're going for. Depending on the exposure, you want the star to come out. Uh, I am gonna add a bit of clarity to make the star come even more. Um, Let's talk about noise. Noise, you see, uh, it's gonna be, it's a pretty noisy photo, but it's not that noisy. So on this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the sharpening around 80. That's gonna bring back a lot of noise. So then I'm gonna put the masking around 50. Remember, when you, uh, anything which is black is not gonna get sharpened. So if you put it at 50, you just get the deep space. You don't wanna sharpen the deep space. And uh, maybe a little bit of noise reduction, like 20 or something. Okay, so now we got a good contrasty sky. What I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna take this photo and he did a time lapse, so he had like 100 or 200 photos. I, I'm only gonna use about 60 to 70 photos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the first one, select uh, the first 60 photos. No, that's 110 selected, that's way too much. Uh, so I'm gonna go whatever number, because I've already done it. So I'm gonna select like, for example, 54, uh, I'm going to select like, okay, like this, 63 photos, and then I'm going to click on sync, and I'm going to check all, and I'm going to click on synchronize. Now, I've already done this, so I'm not going to redo it. So it's going to copy the setting, you know, the retouching that I did on the first one on all the photos. Then I'm going to right click, I'm going to export um, as a JPEG. So I'm going to export as a JPEG, but I'm not going to resize to fit. I'm just using a JPEG into a specific folder. I've already done that. Now, how do you do the start trail? Well, the start trail, and that's the good news. Again, I'm gonna give you the link. It's done with a free software that works on Mac, that works on Windows. Amazing software called Star Stags. You can, in two minutes, install it. Super easy to use. You will see how easy to use. So here is the software that's open. Uh, you see it says drop image here. Here is the photo that I've exported. So I'm gonna select all the photos. You know, that's the photos I exported with the retouching that I just showed you. So that's how they look. You know, very contrasting. So I'm gonna select all the photos, boom. I'm gonna drag and drop them here. So here they are. And then all you need to do is click here. You see on this little, I don't like to have the icons are on this app. They're kind of confusing because they all have the same background. But if you click here, 
then you go to blending and you've got different modes. I tried the different modes, but the best is gap uh, filing, uh, filling, gap filling. Okay. Uh, you can click here on subtract dark images. I know I don't have any dark images on this one. So gap filling. And then all you have to do is click on this button. So it's really two click, one click here called start processing. You see this one? And check this out. It's going to start building the photo going th uh, through all the different photos and it's just going to blend them. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to accelerate this so you can see this in real time. I mean, in full resolution, the whole thing takes about two minutes. No big deal. So. All right, so it's done. Now all I have to do is, all you have to do is click on save. So what I, I wanted to tell you is that you see there is some cumulative light, meaning that, you know, if you have a shooting star passing by, or if you have a, you know, car passing by, they will, you know, they, they, they will accumulate. Anything which is brighter is gonna, is gonna accumulate. So stars, but also cars. In this case, it's not such a big deal. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna save the photo, but I've already done it. So I'm gonna jump back into Lightroom and show you the final photo, which is here. Okay, that's the final photo. Now, there is one issue that you, you might have. If you look here, a lot of noise came, like the whole bottom of the photo is not really nice. Uh, the, all the cars that came by were accumulated. So one thing you can do, a little trick that I'm gonna show you, is you take a photo where you like the, the background, uh, which, you th which I think is cool, you know, when like this one has a car, you see a car was passing by, looking for one which is really dark. Okay, like this one is really dark, for example. Uh, and then you take this one, and then you right click, uh, ba -ba -ba, edit, open as layers in Photoshop. What that's gonna do is gonna, it's gonna take the final JPEG at full resolution and open it in Photoshop with one of the raw files where which has a clean bottom, if I can say, and it's going to put them into the same Photoshop file. So it's on, on, on the same layer. So this one, the top layer is the star before the star trail and the bottom layer. So I'm going to reverse this and I'm going to put this like this. I'm going to put the star trail. I'm going to click here to create a mask. I'm going to take a black brush. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, a black brush. So X to you know have the foreground in black. Make sure my opacity is 100 percent. Uh, the hardness of my brush, I'm going to put it pretty hard, like around 34. And I'm just going to brush here on the bottom of the photo to bring back uh, the bottom how it was because it's going to get rid of some of the noise and some of the light pollution that accumulated from all the shoots. Voila. Pretty simple. It's just a good way to just, you know, get that back. And, uh, and I'm done. Let me put this in full screen. Okay, that's the final result. Uh, a pretty cool effect. You should really try it. You know, you know, use the app to find an North Star. Follow the settings I gave you. You know, on a tripod, and you can have this. It's so easy to use, and the software is completely free. I hope you like this. Now, um, a while back, I came out with a course that I really like called the City Masterscape. Uh, what it is, it's, I've, you know, I did a book on Paris and a bit about New York, and I really show you all my best photos, how I retouch them, how I shot them. Here's a full presentation of that course. Hope you like it. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, and welcome to my Cityscape Masterclass. I just want to walk you through all the different projects that I have. I'm actually just on a few projects because there is over 40 different full retouching and I just picked a few so you have an idea of what you're going to be learning. So first we're going to go live in the Arc de Triomphe where I'm going to show you how I compose my photos and then we're going to do some loan exposure, black and white, selective color or not of the Arc de Triomphe. We're going to go on the top of the Arc de Triomphe and have a beautiful uh, photo shoot there and I'll show you how to retouch because how you can do it without a tripod. Tripod are not authorized on top of the Arc de Triomphe. And then we're going to continue by going to Notre Dame where I did a lot of shoot and a lot of live shoots and I'll show you the best that came out of it. That's the before. That's the final photo that we're going to get in the Notre Dame. We're going to, that's another one we're going to get. That's the before photo and that's the final result where we're going to do like an HDR and really getting all the details coming out. Then I'm going to take you to the Da Vinci Code Church, the uh, Saint-Sulpice, Église Saint-Sulpice. And we're going to do it again in the middle of the afternoon live an ND1000 shoot to get this final result. 
Then we're going to go the whole way down to the south of France in Provence. I'm going to bring you to Saint-Tropez and we're going to do some night street photography with zone exposure. That's the before and that's the final result. One of my favorite one of these small cities in the south of France. This is also a big panorama we're going to be doing, an HDR panorama. That's the final result. Uh, it's uh, a lot of photos. It took about 18 photos to get this result still in the south of France. Then we're going to go back up the whole way to Amiens in the north of France. And I'm going to show you some before and after of a beautiful sunset. I really wanted to do small cities. I wanted to do big cities. So this is again Amiens before and after. We're going to go back to Paris in the Louvre. And I'm going to show you a really cool technique to take out and erase all the tourists. That's the before. And that's the after with no tourists, a beautiful sunset in the Louvre. Then we're going to go to New York. And in New York, I'm going to show you... Uh, a lot of projects there, but this is just one in particular I'm going to show you. This is a building in New York, and that's the final image. Uh, it's a pretty tricky retouching with a vertorama, sky replacement, a lot of you know different things to make really this photo pop. Then I'm going to show you the full workflow of one of my favorite photo ever that I uh, actually sold the most, and this is the view of Paris. It's the cover of this course. and. Uh, there is some work that was taken to get rid of this photo and make it pop. And this is something you can apply on all the high vintage view that you have on Cityscapes. Then we're going to finish by Venice. And this is just one of the projects that's before and after during the carnival. So I've been preparing this course for over a year, taking photos from all over the world. The idea is really to show you my best photos, all my retouching techniques. It's very much in... Um, in the same idea than the landscape masterclass, except this one is for cities. It's got a lot of tricks that you won't find anywhere else, neither on my YouTube channel or on the other courses. There's a lot of new techniques there. And I've even retouched all photos with new techniques that came out with Lightroom CC and Photoshop CC. So I hope you do check it out. It's one of my longest courses that I ever did, the Cityscape Masterclass. And I'm sure it will help you to take your Cityscape photos really to the next level. Check it out.